Hey, hi, ho, and howdy, everybody. My name is Shannon Elshug, and welcome to yet another little bit of Pokemon uh, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon news. Um, so, uh, today, we have... We got a bit to talk about. Um, very specifically, we have two trailers to talk about, because uh, over the past two days, we've had uh, two trailers come out. Um, one that is a Japanese cinematic trailer, and then there is one that is an English, you know let me actually give you information sort of trailer um i want to really quickly touch on both because you know is they're, they're both pretty dope um uh but I, the, the first one again is not going to be super heavy on information but it does have things worth talking about it's, especially it's very sort of um uh re really it, it's, it's a tonal trailer it gives it gives all manner of interesting tones to think about, uh, whereas the other one, again, is much more information heavy. So, uh, real quickly, I do want to go over uh, the Japanese trailer first, because it'll be uh, a lot shorter to get through. Uh, also, first and foremost, um, or second and whatever and something, um, I want to say, uh, I'm sorry for it's taken me a minute to get to this. Uh, yesterday was my birthday, and I had to kind of go out and go and do stuff yesterday, and um, Pokemon decided to drop the Japanese trailer literally like five minutes before I had to leave. It was it was really frustrating. Um, it was a good way to like start a thrust night because I'm like, ooh, look what I have to get to when I get back. I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, no, so I couldn't really do anything about that. And uh, then I had to uh, get back and think about things. And then I was like, ah, it's really, really late. So I need to go to bed. And then they put out the English trailer literally five minutes before I went to bed. So, you know, you, you got me, Nintendo. The joke's on me. You got me, Game Freak. Um, but anyway, it's it's cool. I'm, I'm all about it because we're here now, and that is all that matters. Not to my views, but to my soul. Anyway, um, let's start off here with the Japanese trailer because uh, that's, that's a good one to start with. Anyway, uh, first up... Again, this is the Japanese trailer is a cinematic trailer. So all in all, there's not too terribly much to talk about information-wise. That being said, uh, again, it's it's a huge tonal thing. As soon as it starts off, it's got the like epic dramatic music and Necrozma being creepy as a motherfucker. Anyway, but um, also I I wanna I wanna say that it, it took me a minute to also. I considered putting off this trailer as well because I wanted to wait for accurate translations. I wanted to be able to make sure that I was, I had, you know, what I, what I should have if I wanted to go at it. And I don't really have that, uh, but I've decided there's another trailer to kind of bounce off of for information. And also there's um, little bits of translation here and there that I've come across. Generally, the consensus seems to see, seems to be that those are correct, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go with those. Um, yeah, so uh, hopefully it's not a big deal. Again, take everything I have to say with a grain of salt, but I would say that you're probably okay believing me. Um, anyway, first off, the trailer opens to his d d d spooky moon and n Necrozma being creepy. Uh, first up, as well, uh, the intro shows. Uh, Kukui talking to Lily and uh, the player character. Um, from what I got, it was basically him discussing about how Alola, once back in the day, was like shadowed in darkness or whatever, and then everyone had to get together to come and stop that and take the, take everything back. Basically, that's what I got. Assumedly referring to the thing that's absorbing light and. St Necrozma doesn't seem to be the greatest of people. Um, next up, it's Professor Burnett. I don't know what she's saying at all. I apologize. Probably talking about Necrozma if I had to take a random guess. The next step uh, is the group that we got shown on the poster a little while ago, uh, which we do have a name for, but I'm going to wait on that for a sec. Because uh, it gets shown off in the English trailer, so you know, it's, I'm gonna keep it separate. Anyway, um, so it's basically someone from the group again talking about Necrozma, and I believe its effect on Alola as well. But it is someone from that group. It's the it is the big mustachioed man with the helmety thing. 
Ooh, these people. Um, then, of course, our next dramatic thing is we have Necrozma coming out of an Ultra Wormhole, which is really cool. Um, because, like, it's always kind of been set up that Necrozma was, like, at least from what I always ga gathered, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, boy, somebody better tell me, or I'm gonna look like a, I'm gonna look like a right fool. Um, but Necrozma was, like, an Ultra Beast. Assumedly, it would be like he was an Ultra Beast along the same lines as Cosmo, Cosmo, um, um, Sogaleo and Lunala. Like, yeah, it's an Ultra Beast, but it's been here so long that it kind of adapted and was like, eh, I'm, I'm more of a legendary Pokemon, not really an Ultra Beast at this point. Right? Is, is that what we got? Um... Or at least, well, that was the impression that I always got. But again, I could have been wrong about that. And honestly, Necrozma seems a lot more important uh, than that does, considering the whole, like, well, it's it's got a lot of power that, say, a normal Ultra Beast wouldn't have. Because, like, even, the, even though Ultra Beasts, uh, just purely talking about stat-wise, are stupid strong, they're not, like, legendary. They don't really have, like some like massive thing that they control or can manipulate or influence in some way whereas like so Galeo and Lunala are representations of the sun and the moon Feramosa is just a big bug that makes things think it's pretty um uh and Bolswell's just jacked um anyway so yeah I'm I'm I'm, I'm not 100% sure but it is traveling through ultra wormholes so I'd say it's entirely possible that it's a bit more ultra beasty than, um, than than it's 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 an it's a middle ground. I would I would I would go so far as to assume. Um, yeah, but anyway, it's Necrozma coming in a little wormhole, and then Lunala and Necrozma just beating the shit out of each other because. I, I would assume if I was Lunala, I would be a little upset about Necrozm trying to get all up in my steez as well. So, um, no, no judgments here, uh, little, little moon bat baby. Um, also straight up takes out, um, the main character in Lily, so damn, uh, serious. Um, next scene up is, of course, UB Burst flying in and assembly, and, uh, then we get to see some of the older, um... Uh, Ultra Beast make a reappearance. First up is, of course, Zerkatry, wait, flipping about and waving his arms, and being wiggly and like jelly like, and it's like, mm, Mama zap ya. Um, and then next up is probably one of my favorite scenes of the trailer, is it's Nanu standing in front of the ruins of abundance as Guzzlord, this mountain of a friggin' thing, just jumps right in front of me. He's just like, you know what? I'm just here, baby. I will, I'll bitch slap that big gross looking fucking teeth face right off your goddamn face body thing that you have. Anyway, I think it's dope. It's, it's really cool. Especially Guzzlord is fucking huge. So it's really cool seeing that comparison. Um, then next up is a image of what looks to be Lily reaching out, screaming, shouting, being like, you know, like don't do that or are you please don't die or something like be are you, be okay and it looks like she's reaching out to um one of the necrozma forms uh, it that's what i would guess off the top of my head um but who knows uh there's even another character who does that here in a moment so um who it could be a back and forth between the two of them um i mean that uh next shot up is uh necrozma dusk main uh chilling up at the um the altar of the sun just sending out like a big pulse from a ultra wormhole of just darkness and sinister okay is it just me or is this like this feels like honestly like the first pokemon game where the legendary feels like a villain i, I would argue maybe third gen has that kind of thing too because Groudon and kyogre are actively attempting to just destroy the whole world because they're just whiny bitches i'm sorry they are it's not i mean kyogre still one of my favorite legendaries of all time i'm just saying they're whiny bitches um uh but anyway other than that though like it's never really felt like the legendaries actively were almost like an enemy of their own 
there were all always something that was being used by some other douchebag to fuck something up. Where in like this, it seems like Necrozma's just like, yeah, no, fuck you people, I'm gonna do whatever I want. I I am the baddest bitch in town. I'm gonna do whatever I want. I'm gonna absorb your legendaries. I'm gonna just, I'm a be, I'm a do me. Um, that's what I always kind of get the impression of. Uh, next up, we get a, an image of another location, which again I will discuss here in a moment because it appears in the other. At least I believe it appears in the other trailer. It looks like that kind of thing, um, where uh, it appears that uh, what is it? Necrozma Duskmane again is like sealed up in this bubble on top of this thing. A lot of people when it first came out too, I'm glad I did wait because I had all sorts of different things. Uh, I originally was like, oh, this is a big space station. Look, it's open space and there's all this cool stuff and there's crystals everywhere. It's probably ultra space. Uh, other people then theorized, well, look, actually, you know, a place that looks a lot like that would be like the the dome on top of Mount Lanakila at the end of the game where the you know, the league is. Um, it looks a lot like that. The only difference is the dome isn't on there, so you can't, like, yeah. So it doesn't, you don't see the ground around you. I'm pretty sure we got where this actually is revealed in the other trailer. But again, that's the other trailer, so we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, also, I don't know who was standing in front of uh, Necrozma in that picture. Anyway, uh, we get a repeat of another scene from Sun and Moon, which is... Um, Hala watching as the Guardians are going off to fight the Ultra Beasts. Uh, I believe it's it's Finny and um, Finny and Lele because Bulu don't give no fucks because Bulu is kind of a whiny bitch too. What's with these legendaries being sassy as fuck? Um, next up we have um, the player character in that same sort of location that's like, eh, it looks it looks like that place. Um, floating around little light bubbles all around him, and it's pretty cool. I believe the next shot is, yes, the next shot's literally in the same place, with, again, little light orbs, and they're like, hey, oh, that's magical. So, I would assume that's having something to do with this whole Necrozma light stuff that's going on. Um, next shot, real quick, happens is uh, just Zerkatry freaking out. I'm am in, I'm interested in why the um why the uh you know the um what am I saying the extra love to Zerkatry. I get it, everyone loves Zerkatry. I'm just like I'm wondering why in particular to show extra Zerkatry. I thought it was interesting. Uh, next up, we see this cool like space age locus. Someone I saw compared it to Coruscant on in Star Wars, and I'm like, dude, that's kind of a cool comparison. This, like, cool, like, everything, like, the buildings and everything looks like Necrozma's skin, almost, and it's, it's dope, it's this cool, crazy city, and, of course, two members of the group that we will talk about, um, are standing, uh, behind you as you're sprinting down through the corridors of this massive place. Uh, next up is, it's your boy, Guzma! Um, so that's cool. We got Guzma again. It looks like he's at the altar of the moon as well. I don't know what he's saying. Again, translations, bro. Uh, Japan, why do you do this to me? Um, but yeah, no, it looks like he's at the altar of the sun or the altar of the moon, whatever. Um, and just chilling up there talking. Uh, next up is Gladion and Howe. Again, looks to be in the um, Aether Paradise. Uh, honestly, looks to be in Lusamine's... Um, creepy cryo room thing that she has. Um, at least that's what it looks like. It's very well. It could not be, could be anywhere else in the Paradise, to be honest. It's just that was the first thing I was reminded of. Um, though the thing that is worth noting is one of the few scenes that I do have, again, rough translations for, is this scene. And it's Gladion, from what I understand, basically pondering or angrily talking about how he's worried that his mom is disappearing or dying I think again don't quote me on any of it but I'm pretty sure that's what it was that was the general consensus um yeah so there's that um next up of course we see homeboy's mama um again looks to be at the altar of the moon I think in this because I'm trying to look at the thing behind her uh, either at the altar of the moon or the altar of sun again and it's Lusamine laying on top of Guzma took me forever to realize that that was him under there or 
at least someone that's wearing his outfit. I don't know. Um, reaching out and like, ah, bad stuff. Um, and the, this is the other one that I kind of wanted to hit on because it was, it was the first one I saw because it was like, well, this is a pretty big one. Um, basically, from what I understand, it was like her going, run away, please run away. He's a monster. Which I mean, if you're, I'm, I'm a, sorry, spoilers for Sun and Moon. If your main villain from the previous game, your abusive, questionable, like, monster, like, I'm gonna freeze Pokemon and kill them off and be creepy and all this, like, and I'm gonna release Ultra Base, Ultra, Ultra Base, I'll release Ultra Beast from another world to just rip my entire country apart kind of person is going like, oh yeah, no, you should run away because there's a monster. How bad do you have to be for that to be the person to say that? Honestly, again, it looks like it's at the sun, or it's the altar of the sun or the altar of the moon, so I'd have to guess, if anything, it would be, uh, as long as sun and moon continues to, or ultra sun and moon follows sort of at least the same storyline as the previous game. Obviously, there's a, a lot of differences. Again, to everyone who was like, oh, it's going to be the same. Fuck you, people. I told you it wasn't, and now you can see that it wasn't. It's all kinds of weird, and I love it. Um, But I, I would assume if, if it does gen follow the same general storyline, at least to a certain point, then that would be, this would be after you go and get her from Ultra Space. Uh like you do in the previous game, but instead of her just being unconscious, it's her, like, she's kind of awake and alive. Again, it looks like uh, Guzma is unconscious underneath of her, so I'm very confused at what that is. I can't tell if that's her jumping onto him to stop him, or if it's, like, they're just both taken out. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, let's move on for now. Uh, next up is something really cool. Is number one is you're wearing the same uh, suit in this next picture as uh, this group. We're so close to being able to actually talk about them. I could talk about them now, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna make you wait. I'm gonna tease you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna twist. I'm gonna twist your, your. Um, this is a new show, Shannon. You need to calm down. This is not a normal let's play. You need to act like a normal human being. Anyway, um, that that wouldn't be fun. Anyway. Um, again, we're wearing that outfit, and we are riding, in this pic in this one specifically, we're riding on Sol Galeo, and just in a moment, we're riding on New Lunala through an Ultra Wormhole. At least that's what it looks like. It's f If only there was another trailer in, like, two minutes, which would show exactly what we're doing. It's so fucking dope, by the way. Um, and the next one, of course, is um, the player character walking up that uh, ramp to um, Necrozma. Oh, dear God, I should have brought water. Uh, and across my dusk main on that big um, platform thing, uh, which is pretty dope. And then the last shot of the trailer is just cinematic, and it's Necrozma just going up there and eating the sun, because, again, that's a big bad dude, my dude. Point is, anyway, that was the, uh, the Pokemon... Ultrasun, Ultra Moon, Japanese cinematic trailer. It's really cool. Again, there wasn't a whole lot to talk about, and yet I still talked about it for 20 minutes. Because I'm just that kind of guy. I also just sneezed. I'm just that kind of guy. Anyway, I, th I thought it was really, really cool. So anyway, we're going to move on to the next trailer real quick here. Um, where is it? I have it on my computer. It's right there. I see you, Pikachu. And first and foremost, immediately you will notice there is a very different tone in this, <laughs> this trailer. Because that was the thing too is Pokemon has always been really interesting when it comes to their tones and stuff. Because again, the last one is dark and creepy, and it's like, and that was the thing with Sun and Moon too is all of the like trailer stuff was like, oh, this is a cheery game. Welcome to what is Hawaii in the Pokemon world. It's like it's all super cheery, and then the game came out and it's like, oh, this is super cheery. What? What? Is she? What? Is, who is this person? Why are you crazy? What is happening with the? D Why are we killing? What is? It? Don't kill the! Don't kill the baby cloud! Like it's it's really, got weirdly dark in those games, um, and now it seems to be continuing that uh thing in this. And again, Pokemon's always had weird dark stuff throughout the whole thing, man. I mean, the whole last generation was based on 
Oh yeah, remember that war 3,000 years ago that killed all kinds of things? Yeah, that was a thing. And then there was a dude who just basically nuked the planet. That was kind of weird. Um, yeah, no, Pokemon is savage as a motherfucker. Anyway, just an interesting thing to think about, because this trailer is pretty fucking upbeat, I'm not going to lie. Uh, first and foremost, we discuss the adventure through an ultra wormhole, and of course the trailer is titled Travel Beyond Alola. So, that's pretty fucking dope. Um, and the next trailer shows us again riding on Solgaleo and Lunala showing us riding through ultra wormholes and it's not just like oh it's a cutscene no it's you're actually it's like a little mini game similar to the mantine surf which i thought that was really cool it was like we were so excited that we was going to be able to ride a mantine between islands we can ride a giant space lion and a magical space bat baby through space and time and be like i'm gonna go to this universe and this one and that one that's the that is the craziest thing to me is that I, I assume that they're gonna be small sort of like dungeon esque areas, but still that you're just hopping and bopping and popping through different parts of ultra space. To me, that is awesome. Yeah, because you know it's like a little mini cutscene. You fly through these things and you fly through portals, and then boom, there he is. Um, and and another cool thing is about going into these different places in ultra space you get to just straight up battle Ultra Beasts like they were, like, you get to battle in Ultra Space, which again, spoilers for the previous game, you got Ultra Space for all the five minutes, you talk to Lusamine, and then she's like, bitch, I'm about to go ham on you. And then she does, and she defeats me for only the second time, and the only other time in that game that I lost. Um, She whooped my ass. Um, Anyway, point is, you do that, and then and it's done, and you don't go to Ultra Space anymore. Um, you're not even allowed to go to Ultra Space anymore. Um, but in this, yeah, no, it seems that you can just kind of go between the different worlds in Ultra Space, at least at least semi-willy-nilly, I don't know. It probably will have an end. Um, but you can go between the different places and encounter Ultra Beasts where they live, which is crazy and awesome. Like, of course, uh, the place that we go to... In the original game, of course, is the big, the, like, crystalline, almost very reminiscent of, um, the location, or the, the, the aesthetic that gets brought up by Molly in the third Pokemon movie with the unknown, and everything's all, like, crystalline and creepy as fuck. Um, it's kind of like that, and of course that was where Neolego was found, and where Lusamine was all doing her stuff. Um... In, uh, in the trailer, it even shows you sitting on the same rock that Lucimine was sitting at, and you're just like, ah, I'm just chilling here with my doofy face, and then, you know, Neolego sneaks up behind you, and assumedly you gotta battle it. Um, <clears throat> the next world that we talk about is, assumedly, I'm not gonna say assumedly, I can see it right here on my screen, it's where uh, Zerka trees come from. It's like this massive... Ro these big rock and crystal formations and these tubes all over the place that have the same kind of like twist tie light bulb things that Zerka trees have and then I didn't I never noticed this before because my quality was so terrible because my internet is the worst thing ever um, but there's you see a Zerka tree sprinting along the wires um, running around and then there's like four or five Zerka trees on the bottom down below you just freaking out Oh, there's like seven or eight of them. Jesus. They're all over the place, and it's awesome. Um, and then the next location we see is this almost like something. It looks like it's something out of Mario, and I kind of love it. Uh, this big, like, tropical jungle, twisty trees and stuff all over. The, it looks it looks incredibly dope. And from what I understand, there's also a huge volcano in the background. And this is the place. Yeah, this is the place where we can encounter things like Buzzswall. I would assume Ferramosa would be in the same general location. You could probably say that Cel Celestila and Cartana would be there too, because they tend to stick around that sort of area as well. Um, or they could not. I don't know. I don't know how many different uh, worlds they're going to have, but hopefully they have a lot, and they just they go wild, especially with the introduction of new Ultra Beasts, because what, we have, we have two new Ultra Beasts confirmed before this trailer, and we have another one confirmed after this trailer, so... It's cool, so hopefully we'll be able to see a bit more of these. It'd be also very cool if we could just go out and randomly encounter them. I just, I think that would be cool. And then there's this thing. Um, the next thing up is Ultra Megalopolis. 
that's a name and a half. But what it also is, is it's where these people in these suits come from. Uh, and it's kind of dope. Again, it's that Coruscant place that looks like it was absorbed by Necrozma skin and everything. Spoilers, it's because it was absorbed by Necrozma. It's a place, wherever it is, it's some place in ultra space where apparently these humans, or these people, I don't know, they don't look... That's the thing is they look human, but they also don't at the same time. Like, they don't have any color to their skin. Their facial hair and their hair coloring is funky. And I get it's anime, so you can go wild with it. But it's like it feels off all in every way. Because you can see their actual skin, or at least their masks are, like, to their skin sort of, sort of thing. Because uh, there's scenes later on in the trailer where you can literally see them smiling and you know talking and stuff it's it's really weird so i'm very interested in seeing what that's about because i'm not 100 percent willing to call them human yet but i'm also not willing to call them anything else either so anyway i'm very interested to see what that's about but anyway this this group comes from megalopolis it's of some place in ultra space where necrozma had stolen the light and it's this it, it's this creepy looking this dark city place um and what else it is, is it at the top of what looks to be a giant elevator shaft, grav lifty almost looking kind of thing, is that big platform that we talked about earlier that, that looks kind of like Lana Kila. Um, so again, presume, or assumedly, that is in Megalopolis, and that's where Necrozma Duskman or Necrozma Dawn Wings ends up by the end of the game or whatever, uh, like containing it or something. But anyway, it again, it shows us that scene of us running through the thing. Looks like, uh, it's, it's really cool because it, it means we probably won't be able to explore that much. But it's it has that little corridor with you and the other two members of that group. And little, like, caltrop uh, roadblocks, like, blocking you in to make sure you can only go one location. Because that is a huge city. That would be so cool to explore. And there it is. So, uh, the, the group, the mysterious group that we've been talking about is the Ultra Recon Squad. Again, it's this group that comes from Megalopolis. That's kind of all we know about them. And that they're incredibly interested in, obviously, Necrozma and Alola and what's going on. Um, assumedly, it's because, again, Necrozma stole the light where they come from. So, I would assume they they either want back at it or they're trying to get it back so they can fix their place. Or they're, I don't know, they're trying to do something. Um, I'm not 100% sure whether or not I'm willing to call them villains or whether or not I'm willing to call them t allies. Because it looks like, again, you're wearing their kind of like armor suit sort of stuff um, when you go off to ride so Galea and Lunala through Ultra Space, but you also, it shows in this trailer that you battle them as well, so I'm not 100% sure what's up with that. Also, this, we'll get to the battle here in a minute, I, I, I stick with one thing at one time. Anyway, we get introduced to the four members of the Ultra Recon Squad, I don't know if there's more of them than that, but there's at least four admin kind of sort of things. Um, and they're exclusive to the different games, which I think is kind of cool. It's, it's incentive to buy two. Um, anyway, uh, the first ones are um, exclusive to Ultra Sun, and those are Dulce. Again, I'm going to probably butcher these names because they're weird. Um, Dulce and Zossi. Dulce is, looks to be just kind of a, a your, your average dude. He looks like a, your typical average, I'm going to get some stuff done kind of guy. Um, and then Zossi is the little girl character that we saw in the poster. Like, the one I was like, you look really tiny and look almost like a child. Is she She honestly looks like a child. Either that or she is itty-bitty, teeny-weeny, yellow polka dot. But point is, she's very, very small. She's got Neo Syndrome from Ruby. It's ridiculous. Um, but I'm loving it anyway. Um, and then in, in their thing, it just show them at the Aether Paradise, looking like they're attempting to stop you or someone. Um, I don't know. Uh, and then next up, it shows them, and I want to assume either, is it Diglett Cave, or is it that cave on Melee Melee Island where um, 
that that's through the meadow. It might be that place. I'm just I'm trying to think with what little I have to work with. I don't have a lot to work with. Um. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's Zossi and Dulce running into you there. It looks like you're with Nebby. Um, and it's just Zossi talking about how running around is so tiring, and then it follows up with Dulce fighting you. Um. It only has one Pokemon, so I assume it is something that you fight them multiple times throughout the game. Again, it, it come off looking like an evil team. I'm sorry. You just do. You look sinister. I'm sorry. Um, and then on to the Ultra Moon side, you have uh, the 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 uh, patriarch looking fella from the trailer as well, uh, a man by the name of Fico, uh, and Soliera, which is the the motherly sort of character that I was mentioning uh, in that poster as well. Um, which I'm kind of cool with. I'm a Miss Zossie because she's adorable, but these two are still pretty dope. Guess, guess who's better than Sun and Moon tonight? Um. Uh. Anyway, so it shows them running into uh, the female protagonist in I want to say Verdant. Is it what is the is it Verdant Cavern or whatever? It's wherever um Ilama's trial took place. At least that's what it looks like. Um. Running to them, they're giving off all manner of strange ass hand signals. Um, and then it looks like the next scene is them in Iki Town talking about the island Kahuna and his effects on the island or something. So, again, assumedly talking about Hala if it is Iki Town. And the next one is followed up with, of course, a battle with Soliera. Again, and you can look, and this, this shows it off perfectly. That's their skin. They they look like dr like whited out. Like I'm I'm white. I'm really white, but I'm not that white at all. Um, it's it's really it's really interesting, and I'm very interested to see what it's about. And again, honestly, I, with with the the dynamic between them all, it's almost like they're like a family. Uh, just purely based on like, hey, they they all kind of share the same color, or at least Fico and Soliera do. Uh, the other two, uh, significantly less so. So I'm uh, I'm immediately take back what I said. I ain't calling nothing. That's a bad idea for me to do. Um, but anyway, yep, shows you with a battle with Soliera, and then, oh my goodness, golly gosh, can we talk about this for a second? Oh my god, um. We got a new uh, Ultra Beast reveal, and it's uh, UB adhesive, um, and it's like the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't like using Ultra Beasts, I just because they're so strong. Uh, it feels like using a legend Pokemon, a legendary Pokemon to me, and I don't like using legendary Pokemon. It just it feels like it takes me out of it. Uh, I will make some exceptions for certain Pokemon that I just I really have an emotional connection to. That being said. You best believe I want this thing. Look at it. It's so goddamn adorable. Um, as a pure poison type. And the really cool thing about this is, assumedly because these people come from Ultra Space, they have Ultra Beasts on their team. Uh, in, in the trailer, it shows Dulce throwing out a UB adhesive and battling you with it. Um, and just delivering the finest of Venoshocks. And it's so goddamn cute. I want it immediately. Um, and the next step, it basically just goes on to talk about uh, the other two Ultra Beasts that got revealed and their typings. Um, UB Burst is a fire ghost type, and its signature move, which is a toss in his head, is the move called Mind Blown, uh, which looks to do like... I, it looks like a head smash, but like a fire type or a ghost type. Um, next up is UB Assembly, again, with its rock and steel type. Makes sense. Um, which to my knowledge doesn't have no super move or nothing like that, but um, yeah, no, so that's really cool. Uh, it gave us lots of new information about the Ultra Beast, it showed off a new Ultra Beast, gave us information on um, that big scary city looking place again, Megalopolis, Ultra Megalopolis. I'm sorry, how could I have forgotten? Ultra is in everything in this fucking game. Um, uh, we got to learn about the Ultra Recon team. Uh, I, I'm 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 very excited to see where this is going. I I cannot express to you how excited I'm. Pokemon Sun and Moon is one of my favorite Pokemon games of all time. It might be my favorite, um, at least at least in the main series games. XD will always hold a ridiculously special place in my heart. Um, 
But I, I absolutely adored Sun and Moon. It was the first time I ever actually legitimately cared about characters, and I'm so happy that we're sticking with those characters a little while longer to go and do more with it. And this this whole thing, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just really happy that Necrozma's getting the treatment that he is, that uh, we get to see Lily and Hal and Gladion and Lusamine and Guzma again. Uh, I'm, I'm super intrigued by Megalopolis. Um, and the Ultra Recon Squad. I really want to know what is up with them. Also, I wonder, again, if they are an evil team, does that mean we have three evil teams in this generation? Because <laughs> that's kind of wild. Um, uh, we have that sort of thing to deal with. And then, again, the, the idea that you can go out into Ultra Space and travel to different locations, I hope they, they, they run with that. They just go wild with it. Because that was one of the hugest things for me after sun and moon i was like please don't abandon ultra space even even if you have to move on to a new generation don't abandon that that's such a great thing you've been building forever on um alt alternate realities new worlds and especially recently they've been just amping it up between fourth gen with uh the distortion world and then they kind of took a break from it in fifth gen when they came back with a vengeance in gen six with the delta episode and all that and now coming back again with this with ultra beasts and ultra space like that's such a cool thing run with that um i i love those ideas and i hope they don't get abandoned to the wayside there's so many things that pokemon does that i'm always kind of worried that they're just gonna give up it's the same way with um Lolan forms. I, I really hope they do not give up on regional variant variants at any time soon, because that is that is the perfect addition to the Pokemon franchise. Um, and other things which I didn't agree with 100% the first time around, but as time goes on, I love them more and more. Uh, things like Mega Evolution, I mean even Z moves to to a lesser extent. Um, but things like Mega Evolution, please don't abandon those game break. Just just run with them. Let them build. Keep growing. Don't ever abandon everything else in order to make way for those things. Still get new Pokemon normally and all these cool things. But please don't get rid of these great ideas that you've added into this game. I know not everyone's going to love them, but the people who do love them, fuck, are they awesome. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway... This is this is so cool. I'm, I've been saying forever, man. Just give give Game Freak time to to show it off. You, you it's gonna be good. And holy fuck, is it looking to be good? Um, I'm I'm so very excited for these games. I, again, like I said, I'm pre-ordering immediately after I finish editing this game, uh, editing this trailer. Um, oh, I'm loving it, guys. Uh, if if. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed what whatever's in it, if you guys have ideas, theories, information, or you guys have something to say, boy, shut up, you're too annoying. You're right about that. I will get on that. Um, but if, if you have anything to say like that, if you have whatever you have to do, please, by all means, comment down below. Tell me what you're thinking. I'm so totally hyped and excited for these games, man. Um, and I want someone to geek out with. Um... Also, if, of course, if you enjoyed it, go ahead and like and subscribe and all those things. But mostly comment, because I like to talk, um, if you haven't noticed. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I will talk to you guys in the next episode, whenever that happens to be. Whatever little bit of new news we happen to get. Um, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm loving it. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Toodles, doodles, and lemons. Ha bye bye